cotton crops has been identified government of india among the top tomato onion potato these are the three major uh, you know crops in horticulture sector which constitutes more than you know uh, 50% of the total uh, fruit uh, vegetable production in india so the major uh, problems in this uh, as we are all experiencing uh, today, the fluctuations in the price of tomato. Yesterday, if you have heard, uh, you know, uh, the talk by the finance minister uh, regarding the efforts being made by the government to ease the inflation by importing tomatoes from Nepal. And some point in time, uh, we were exporting, and uh, the situation says that uh, farmers had to plow back the tomato into their fields because it was not fetching even one rupee a kilo. So these are the challenges, actually, the, the important commodity that, uh, like a tomato, uh, we are facing in the country, uh, which bothers both uh, you know, consumers as well as uh, the producers. You must have see, uh, heard about the news clippings uh, in newspaper and various other channels, where during this time, the last one month, one and a half months, people have made crores, farmers have made crores, each one selling the tomato for 80 to 100 rupees a kilo at the farm gate. And, uh, you know, definitely you can expect a, a mad rush uh, into sowing in the, in the next season. And definitely we are going to end up in a glut where again the prices will come down to a rupee or two per kilo. So that this is a cyclic uh, phenomenon happening for, uh, happening for the last many years. Uh, it's not new, it's happening many years, but this is the first time uh, the price has breached 100 rupees mark. And that is going to be a challenge with uh, climate change happening uh, all over the world and uh, the impact of that on various production systems uh, and India being the second largest producer of tomato in the world. We have, uh, you know, a major role to play. And from that point of view, uh, now tomato cannot be seen as a commodity for our own purpose but also to supply to the rest of the world as one of the food commodities. So it is against this background, uh, I think uh, uh, this uh, Grand Challenge program has been opened to invite uh, the submissions, ideas, and uh, you know, um, participate in this particular program. So this vertical on which I've been uh, asked to uh, speak about is uh, the vertical four, which is uh, innovative technologies and solutions for uh, long-term preservation and to reduce the panic selling due to perishability. So, as I told just now, uh, we are the second largest producer of tomato in the world. China is number one with almost 60 million tons of production. And we are uh, number two with almost uh, 20 million tons of production. So, uh, many of those people of uh, my age may remember that 25 to 30 years back, uh, tomato used to be a crop which is grown during winter season and it is available plenty in winter and rest of the seasons, it was not uh, that much available. But uh, if you see the production pattern in the last 25 to 30 years, uh, we have been able to come out with a large number of varieties and hybrids, both public as well as private uh, organizations, where they have been able to break this barrier of seasonality of tomato. Uh, and you know now it can be grown um, around the year. You know, all the three seasons in one or the other part of the country. But when you see the, the, the fluctuations in the market prices, it is still the same winter season where there is plenty of supply coming into the market during months of October, November, December, and January. This is the peak season when there is glut in the market and, uh, and uh, you know, or the prices go down. And remaining period, it is a lean period. Uh, that is the period where, you know, it pinches the pocket of the consumer. So uh, now we are concerned about both protecting the farmer as well as the consumer. So uh, if you see, compare the production of China with that of India, it is one third, though it is at, uh, at that, even then it is at second position. But there is a, is a major difference in the price component or cost of production component in China and India. China, 60 million tons they produce as well as the cost of production is very low, around one rupee or so when converted into rupees. Whereas our cost of production is somewhere around three rupees a kilo. 
there are many reasons for that, but uh, the major reason what I think is the productivity. Our productivity is less compared to the productivity of uh, China. Uh, we have an around uh, around 22 million uh, 22 tons per hectare productivity, where theirs is much higher. And basically, that is because uh, majority of their production is is done in corn cows, whereas majority production in India is done in open fields. That is a major difference. Now, as far as the farmers are concerned, there are smaller and medium uh, uh, smaller marginal farmers who produce tomato. And they have an holding very small, around one or two point uh, five uh, uh, acres, or less than that one hectare, and less than that maximum two hectares. So there, uh, it is not possible to have uh, uh, the kind of investment that is required to produce the tomatoes in poly houses. So majority of them they produce under open field conditions, and uh, this is again one of the crops which has got. Uh, uh, requirement of a lot of inputs, particularly the pests and diseases. Uh, there are major diseases, uh, fungal, bacterial, and viral diseases plaguing this particular crop, and in plant protection inputs, a lot of money goes into that from the farmer side. So that is one of the major challenges. Of course, to some extent, uh, we have been able to solve that by developing, uh, you know, disease resistant varieties and hybrids both by private as well as uh, government organizations like Indian Institute of Horticultural Research and Indian Council of uh, Agriculture Research. So uh, now uh, the, the problem actually is why this problem statement, why all this challenge has to be thrown open uh, to the public uh, uh, to come with ideas. There are uh, some of the constraints which are beyond beyond the reach of scientists. As scientists, what we can do is produce varieties and hybrids, uh, high yielding varieties and hybrids and technologies uh, for its uh, transport, marketing, preservation, things like that. But there are many things which are where we cannot involve as an, a research organization. So uh, those we will discuss in detail, what are those challenges? So one of the major problems is, as I discussed, the price volatility. Sometimes it is one rupee or two rupees a kilo, and times like now, it is 100, 150 rupees a kilo. And this is the one which will uh, cost very dear to both consumer as well as uh, producer. Because for the producer, he will, he will not get even the price that he has, uh, the cost he has put in to produce it. Whereas for the consumer of every strata, because tomato is an important ingredient in Indian cuisine, whether it is uh, in a drawn trodden uh, person or the highest strata, it is one of the important ingredients. So its inflation makes a lot of difference to the lives of the people. So uh, now if you see the challenges, uh, we have been talking about this and government of India through different schemes have been promoting, uh, you know, processing. One of the major one is Prime Minister formulation of food processing industry scheme, which has come post COVID and a lot of incentives provided there to start uh, uh, you know, processing industries. And uh, one of the commodities focused on that is again, uh, as I said, the top and tomato is number one in that. So, uh, but the problem is tomato as a commodity is preferred fresh in India market. When we have to handle a produce fresh, it has got its own challenges. It's a living entity and it undergoes all kinds of biochemical changes during uh, its life after harvest till it is processed or consumed and in the process there is a deterioration in the quality and spoilage is due to pathogens so this is one of the challenges which we have to address uh, the second is exposure of uh, exposure to fluctuating market conditions now the postal results are huge if you see the status report as well as uh, the government of india's uh, uh, data on post harvest losses uh, in uh, agricultural commodities, you'll find it is between 15% uh, to 25-30%, as some reports say. And these post-harvest losses are in marketplace, in during harvesting, during handling, during transportation, and all this. And one of the major uh, factors which control or or influence this kind of loss 
is the fluctuating atmospheric conditions, particularly the temperature and humidity. So if the temperatures are low, the, uh, 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 the life will be more, but if the humidity is low, life will be less and weight loss will be there, tremendous weight loss. And this is where uh, we incur a huge loss in the retail chain, where the tomatoes are sold on roadside and small super, super, small uh, shops where uh, it is open to atmospheric condition. Only a very small quantity of this you will find being sold to supermarkets, even in supermarkets. Maybe the supermarket store may have a little less a temperature uh, compared to outside, but uh, if you see the volume of the tomatoes that move through this channel, it's less than 5% of the total tomatoes that are traded. So that is a big challenge. 90% are sold still on the roadsides and street corner shops and exposed to these vagaries and influencing factors which will uh, uh, you know, spoil the produce as well as uh, reduce its quality and loss. Then second is uh, what we, we propose or we recommend always is these perishables, uh, the loss in the perishables can be controlled by processing into various kinds of products. Now, as far as tomato is concerned, uh, the use of processed tomato is not very popular among Indian consumers. We still love to have it in our cuisine, either in sambar or rasam or any kind of sabji, uh, no sabji, including veg or non-veg goes without tomatoes. So we would like to have the fresh tomatoes in those preparations than in processed reform. Very few, uh, maybe the upper middle class or, uh, or uh, upper class and the restaurants, they use the processed tomato in the form of puree or, or uh, pulp or uh, paste. Otherwise, the most popular tomato product that we are familiar about is tomato sauce and tomato ketchup which are again popular only in, in, in tier one, tier two cities, but not in the rural areas. So that is another challenge, how to make Indian consumers familiar and comfortable with the tomato in its process form. Now there are problem processing industries also. Now processing industries say that Indian varieties are not suitable for processing because they have very low levels of total soluble solids or tomato solids and uh, low in color, the, the majority of them, the red color like opin, and low product recovery. So when the solid content is less, finally when it is converted from fruit to a, a pulp or puree, the moisture gets evaporated and when the solids are less, the total recovery will be less. And ultimately they will end up uh, you know, paying huge cost. That is where we face a problem uh, with our tomatoes. And what we hear is many processes that depend on imported tomato from China, where uh, their cost of production is less, their uh, uh, varieties are suitable uh, for processing with high soluble solid content, and its landed cost will be lower than that which can be made in India. So this is another challenge, how to overcome that. Then that is as far as market is concerned now, there are problems on farm front also. So uh, in farm front, the major problem is our farmers being small and marginal. They are not very uh, 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 conversant with post service, proper scientific post service handling protocols, the practices that should be done at uh, farm level to get a better price for their produce. And they make very little effort, even if somebody knows about it. And just they wait for a moment like this today when the prices uh, go up and they make a fast buck. But in the next season, again, they incur huge losses. So uh, this is another challenge. So in villages or production catchment areas, this sorting grading thing is not done. Instead farmers, they, what they do is, uh, they, they, they uh, pack uh, uh, the containers that is boxes, wooden boxes or crates uh, with all kinds of grades, small, medium, ripe, unripe, off ripe, everything they put it into that, particularly in boxes, and arrange a few good colored, good sized ones on the top and bottom ones will be second grade, third grade groups. And this practice uh, makes them vulnerable, uh, you know, uh, to the other market forces or the intermediaries or the middlemen whom we call. They're basically the aggregators or wholesale buyers. They go around uh, the rural, rural areas and pick up from this when, and they're familiar that this uh, this is a malpractice done by uh, in rural areas the farmers. So what they do is they give a lower price, and uh, 
through that other farmers incur loss. So, and these intermediaries, they carry it uh, uh, to the nearest uh, uh, major market and uh, do the sorting and grading at their place and change the hands to the next destination within 12 to 18 hours. So they are not much bothered about, uh, uh, you know, how much the power one makes or how expensive it is going to be for the consumer. Another challenge is no cold storages are available in catchment areas. Majority of these cold storages which are there, they are in most of uh, the urban areas and they're not accessible, even though many of them may be lying vacant. They're not accessible to these farmers. So uh, this, uh, you know, uh, uh, is another problem where uh, uh, they cannot uh, resort to uh, long-term storage of uh, uh, the tomatoes. Now, when we say long-term stories, there are other technological limitations also. When it comes to uh, the technologies available for storage of tomatoes, uh, what technologies we have for extending the shelf life through cold storage and you know other treatments, we can extend up to one month. There is no technology available either in India or anywhere in the world for extending the shelf life of tomato beyond one point and a half months. That is another limitation. Uh, and uh, we prefer fresh, whereas in other countries, 70, 80% of them are processed and they consume the processed material in their preparations, but whereas our consumers are not familiar with that, are not comfortable with that. So what happens is in the process, we, are, we do not have a technology also to address this problem in total. A small, maybe the fag end, if a commodity is having a shorter supply period, yes, it can be deployed. But when the commodity is available for a longer period of time, then this, uh, this technology will be of very limited use. Because the tomato picking, once the harvest starts, there will be multiple pickings, sometimes five, sometimes 10, depending upon the variety of what they're growing. Uh, it goes on for a month almost. If there are 10 to 12 pickings, it may go to one, one and a half months, the picking goes on. And uh, the glut period uh, uh, in the market will be one month to three months. Whereas your uh, lean period is shorter, but the glut period is longer. And when there is a glut for one to three months, and we don't have a technology to extend the, the life uh, through any means to that long period, that becomes a problem. That is another technological limitation that we have where there is a need to have solutions on that front. So to overcome this problem, we have to have a strategic plan where there is a regulation or regulated production system. Though it is uh, said easily than done, there are many practical problems related, uh, which are technical, non-technical, uh, you know, social, political, so many angles are there to that. So, but at one or the other point in time, some of this will have to be addressed uh, with proper policy of control over the production. Right now, today, agricultural production cannot be controlled through any legislation or by any other means uh, by the government because farmers are free to produce whatever they will, uh, feel like according to their choice. So uh, with that, we, uh, we, uh, we don't have a system where we can control the production. So we produce more than what is required or more than we rather in a simple way to say, we buy it more than what we can chew. So with that, uh, the market is flooded and everybody uh, you know, makes loss in the process. Then uh, as I said in the beginning, the other uh, limitation is our cost of production is very high because of low productivity compared to the number one in the world. So there is a need to increase the productivity or reduce the cost of production. So the means and uh, methods available for reducing the cost of production is reduce the inputs, particularly the uh, expensive inputs like pesticides. So we have to come out with varieties suitable for, I mean, varieties which are resistant uh, to pests and diseases naturally, so that the usage of these uh, pesticides comes down thereby reduce the cost of production because farmers will not have to buy these expensive chemicals. And the other means is to increase the productivity, that is the capacity of the plant to yield, which uh, you know uh, we are uh, fairly successful enough uh, uh, in doing that 
um, uh, in 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 uh, Indian conditions. Major lacuna is on form processing facility. Primary and secondary. So primary is where the uh, the sorting, grading, segregation of the good and bad are done, and and the price and price should be fixed on form according to the grades, which is not there. So the primary processing packhouse establishment is one thing which is required. So for this, the thing is, all these models are available. Thing is, who will build the cat? Who will take it up? Farmers, traditionally, as we have, uh, uh, we, have we have understood, uh, they'll be waiting for somebody else to do before they take any risk. And uh, who is going to be that model farmer is a big question mark. Secondly, the secondary processing. When we do the primary processing of uh, sorting grading, definitely one would end up with the because being a biological commodity. There is no uniformity. 100% uniformity is not possible uh, with the product, uh, present production system that is there uh, in our country. So there will be sorting grading. There will be grades, grade one, two, three. So when the grade, uh, uh, higher grades are sent for the fresh market, the lower grades has to be processed into evaluated products. And those facilities are not there right now in the production catchment areas. Then the product diversification. Now, uh, how, uh, uh, how to make, you know, different products with tomato as major base or with other commodities as major base where tomato is one of the ingredients. So this uh, product diversification is not there. We have typically copied uh, try to copy what is there in the West, that is uh, uh, the ketchup sauce and you know uh, typical uh, products uh, which are there in West. Whereas Indian food system is entirely different. We have at least uh, you know 50 types of pickles and uh, uh, 25 or 30 types of chutneys and uh, powders that are uh, you know traditionally consumed in India. Uh, as as a, an uh, what you call adjoint uh, with our snacks and food, so uh, uh, we are more comfortable with that than these products, uh, tomato products like uh, tomato sauce and ketchup. That's why it has failed to make inroads into uh, the major consumer market. Uh, that is one of the reasons. Secondly, uh, you know to support this, when there is a product diversification valuation, we end up with uh, processing waste. So these processing waste uh, in other countries are converted into other tertiary products, and that is also missing in our system. So overall, it is a big challenge as far as uh, uh, you know this uh, activity of tomato production uh, and marketing is concerned in India. So there is uh, uh, you know a need for a multi-pronged uh, strategy uh, to to uh, to overcome or circumvent this problem. So, how to address these things? What comes to my mind and uh, uh, through the discussion we have at various fora is that uh, to reduce the cost of production, we have to deploy multiple disease resistant varieties. As I said, we have uh, Indian Institute of Horticulture Research has come out with half a dozen of uh, multiple disease resistant varieties, three disease resistant, four disease resistant, high yielding varieties. So, once they are resistant to diseases, the expenditure on pesticide obviously comes down and they also have inherent genetic potential to yield higher. So the productivity increases, the cost of production comes down. Now, how to propagate these uh, these varieties and the strengths that we have, the, the advances and achievements that we made uh, and take that uh, into the nook and corner of the country. That's a challenge. Then promote cultivation of mixed varieties. Now the, uh, uh, the industry problem is these varieties which are grown for the table purpose. Now, when I say these name these varieties, these will not these don't cover even you know 10% of the total area under tomato cultivation in the country. What I mean to say is 90% of the varieties that are under cultivation are those which are not suitable for processing. That is uh, the, the complaint of the industry. And these are the uh, you know latest varieties, and slowly started making inroads into uh, the farmers' fields. And today uh, we cannot even claim that 10% of the area under tomato is covered with these varieties. So there is a need to 
take these varieties into the, uh, into the uh, farmers' fields in a big way in all areas. And probably another strategy would be that uh, instead of growing one variety, uh, if there is a glut like we have uh, seen, uh, all those uh, when they, it cannot be nice, when it doesn't go into fresh market uh, for the table purpose, then uh, and there are no takers for uh, a processing industries ready to take that, then it goes for the toss. So probably as we are now talking about uh, the mixed variety planting or mixed uh, um, crop uh, planting in different uh, horticultural orchards. Probably even tomato farmers now need to think about uh, this and go for mixed varieties so that half of that is uh, per, uh, is uh, for table purpose variety which goes to fresh market and half of the area they grow should be varieties which are suitable for uh, fresh market or which are uh, dual purpose varieties suitable both for fresh market as well as for uh, processing industry so that when prices fall down in the market for the fresh it can be diverted into processing industries so that the price stability could be brought in. Then another improvement where you know uh, it can be increased is to establish pack houses. Uh, now uh, the government has fixed a target of establishing at least 10,000 farmers producers organizations across the country in a shortest possible period of time and efforts around that. And uh, this started showing some positive results in some of the commodities. Now, they should be encouraged to take uh, the establishment of pack houses and the processing facilities, at least in a small scale processing facilities, at least to convert them just into a stable product like pulp. So that uh, these pulp can be given to the, uh, the brands uh, which are there in the market uh, and importing the pulp so that because these grades which will be going to pulping would be grade two, three and others, uh, and uh, uh, the price definitely uh, would be less uh, in making that into a pulp and could be uh, a substitution for the import. So that is possible and there is a scope in that. Yeah, uh, so uh, these are the, you know, uh, areas where, uh, uh, where, uh, you know, we, we expect uh, participation and submission of ideas. Now, these are the challenges and this is the scope. Uh, there can be many ideas, whatever, uh, you know, uh, uh, came to our mind as scientists through discussion in various fora and with the farmers and industry and looking at the market uh, uh, operations in the market. This is what is striking to our mind, but there could be many thing, uh, things and many other ways possible to address these problems where uh, the Eng and Patrail uh, minds from different um, domains, when they're uh, put to extend their imagination and thought towards the solutions for these problems, definitely many innovative out of box ideas may come, which can be tested and ground and see if it can uh, solve the problem. Uh, to some extent. So that is what I wanted to uh, share uh, today with you.